right, guys, here we go. We're going to take a ride on the train to Living History Days. Bye, Dave. Good to see you. Hi friends, welcome to the quilter's cottage. We're going to go inside in just a minute and we're going to see how to sew fabric together to make clothes, to make shirts, to make blankets. We have some really neat people here that know how to do this, so let's go learn something. Okay, back in the day when quilting was young, they would use cardboard or paper or whatever they had to make a template, which would be like a square for your quilt. And they would have to cut each one of them out. Um, nowadays, we have templates with the grids on it that we can use. And we also have individual ones that we can make different patterns with. And they come in all sizes and shapes. Um, this is a very small cutting mat, but it protects the table. You use this as a rotary cutter, and you can cut your piece with this. You don't have to use the scissors. And voila, you have cutting. Um, we also have rulers, and they come in various sizes. They've got a lip on one end so that you can set it on your table and make a cut straight. Um, we have different sizes of those, and we even have the little squares, and they are all numerated so that you can um, make it whatever size you want. Um, as far as cutting goes, um, there are electric scissors. These are pinking shears. And the use of these would be to keep your fabric from raveling on the edges. And we, of course, you have all different sizes and shapes of those. <clears throat> One of the newest um, products is this cutter. And it's for more like applique type um, products. And you just push this through. And you have your little flowers. And it comes in many different little templates too. Um, you've got a Christmas tree here, and you make all different kinds of scrap fabrics, and that's pretty much the process of cutting. Once you have your pieces cut out, these are the squares that I'm going to use, then you want, want to piece them together. And in the old days, they did that by, by sewing by hand. Now this is a, a pattern called a four patch. And I've got one started here. And you just use your thread and your needle and you just sew by hand. You go in and out and you try to keep your stitches just as uh, uniform size as you can. And you just I'll show you my stitches here in a minute. You try to keep them straight as you can. And then, once you get that finished, you have your block. And you, you, sew, these, you sew these two together first, then these two together, and then you sew this part to that part. And that's what I've done with this block. So do you sew on the back side so you don't see the stitches yes. on the front? Yes, you sew on, you put the right sides of the fabric together and then you sew on the uh, wrong side of the fabric and you try to, you try to keep your seams a uniform size and this is, I'm trying to do a quarter inch seam mm -hmm. right here and 
you try to keep your stitches uh, the same size. You're you're really good at that. That looks like that would take a long time, though. It did. It did take a long time, and a lot of people, even today, still do all their quilting by hand. So you're sewing those those four pieces together. If you're going to sew a whole blanket like this, well, uh, you need about probably 50, 50 blocks. Okay. And how long do you think it would take to do that by hand? I have no idea. <laughs> it would take a long time, I think. I mean, you, that's how much I've done just since we've been here. Okay. And I had this already sewn together. So um, the pioneers used quilts for when they went to bed. They used them to cover themselves up with. But I also read that they would put them over their doors and windows to keep the cold air from coming in. Uh -huh. And, uh, could could you was, make other things like could you make a say a dress? Oh, yeah, maybe a shirt. Yes, you could you can make a dress or a shirt You can make anything by hand Is there a faster way to sew than doing it by hand? Sure There was a sewing machine invented oh, and I think it was in 1836 and that makes uh, making quilt making a whole lot easier and Faster can you show me how one of those works? sure Okay, after hand sewing, the first machines were treadle operated, which means that they were run by hand. This machine, however, is not working real well, but this is the uh, concept that it, it sews. <coughs> so is the, it electricity that powers it? No, electricity does not power it. I'm doing the uh, treadle motion with my foot, and that's what powers the machine. This belt is too loose, so it's not actually moving it, but it would if the belt were on there correctly or was uh, set correctly. And you would sit and just uh, sew this way, which made things a lot faster than hand sewing. This machine just does a basic straight stitch, which was a real step up from years gone by. So it's almost like pedaling my bicycle. Almost. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And how, how old is this machine? Because it doesn't look very new. Uh, this machine is a hundred years or older. And uh, the very early treadle machines were uh, probably made in the 1830s. They were a much smaller machine. So it's evolved a lot from the first machines that were made. Hmm. That would make it a lot faster to sew a blanket, wouldn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> much, much faster. And they used these also for all of their clothes making because everything had to be handmade. You couldn't go down to the store and buy a new dress or a new pair of pants or anything like that. It was all made at home. Okay, from the old treadle machine, we moved up to one of the early electric machines. This one's called a Singer Featherweight. It is run by electricity. If I could get my foot pedal to work, it would run much better. There we go. And it does a simple straight stitch as well. But again, it was a time saver. How old is this machine? This machine is from 1951. That's when my mom was born. <laughs> okay, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got a light bulb so you can see better, doesn't it? It, it has a light. It, um, and it also does something the treadle didn't do. It will back up huh. so that you can lock your stitches at the end so that they won't pull out. With the old treadle machines, you had to tie a knot if you wanted to make sure that your stitches were going to stay tight. So at first it was going really slow and then it was going really fast. How do you change that? By my foot. I have a uh, foot pedal down here that I push the uh, mechanism that makes the machine go so I can regulate the speed that way. Almost like a gas pedal on a car. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah. So this was another big, big time saver. And as you can tell, this machine was uh, very compact, didn't, didn't take up a lot of space. You could get it out, set it on a table, and then put it away. So if I ripped a hole in the knee of my jeans, mm -hmm. could you fix that? Yes, I could. Hmm. I have done that a few times. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Okay, from the early electric machines that 
simply did a straight stitch, they would back up. Now we've gone to an automated machine, which is all digital. And this one I have an embroidery head on, which will uh, sew a picture for us. And I'm going to start that. And I don't have to do anything but sit here and watch this. It will uh, do the stitching. And then uh, when it's done, it stops. I only have one thread on here. I could change the different colors of thread for this pattern. It's actually making a little gingerbread boy, but I used a bright orange so that you can see it. And when it finishes, then we'll show you what it looks like. That's very fast. Yes. This one does its own speed because I'm not controlling it. Uh, it's all pre-programmed. This, okay. ma this machine also has just a regular sewing feature on it where I can uh, sew straight stitches or decorative stitches on uh, uh, quilt blocks or applique or do anything like that as well. So you can use it like a regular machine Correct. or you can put a picture in and it'll do it by itself. Correct. That's amazing. Yes. This one does both. And there are many generations of digital machines now. Some of them are a lot more complex than this one. This is one of the uh, easier ones to operate. So it just uh, depends on what you want to do and, and how intricate you want your sewing to be. So I can see it making the gingerbread man. Uh -huh. If you were going to try to do that by hand, could you do it that fast? No. No, I couldn't. And I do hand embroidery as well, but, you know, it takes me two or three days to do what this is going to do in a couple hours or less. Huh. So we now have a gingerbread man. He's all one color, but... That was fast. But, uh, That's the uh, general idea of what, what it does. You can see his, his little legs mm -hmm. and his arms and his head. And it just did it that quick. It did it that quick. Actual sewing time on that was like two minutes. So sewing machines have come a long, long way in the last hundred years, haven't they? A long way, yes. Yes. And I, I see you have a screen here on the back side. Mm -hmm. can actually the screen tells us what pictures we want to use. We we'll use something big here that we can really see. And this is going to be a Mickey Mouse, which once it pulls up the pattern from the uh, memory on the machine, as soon as it's ready to go, it will tell me. I put in the appropriate colors thread and push the button and it'll take it from there. Still retrieving the pattern right now. There it comes. Now we have Mickey Mouse. So if we wanted to continue on with sewing, it would um, tell me what colors to start with, and the sewing time on this particular pattern is 44 minutes. It tells me all that before I ever start. It gives me the colors of thread that I need to use to get the image that um, we have on the screen. Well, thank you for showing me all your sewing machines. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is a, a quilt where it's, it's all put together. The pieces have been sewn together. Uh, your quilt top is your, your design. Then you have a sheet of cotton batting or, or a polyester batting and then you have a, a, a backing like that and you'll quilt through all three layers because you want them to stay together so that they won't shift and move and you just have to it, it's pretty time consuming uh, women would get together and, and have quilting bees and they would quilt together for a day and uh, just have 
have fun and and get things done too so but this will be done and, and we put a lot of hours into it today they have what they call a long arm quilting which is electric mm -hmm. um, and you make lots of different designs with it um, uh, it's there the you can do endless things with the long arm quilting which the hand quilting just takes a lot more time so what, what's the thing on your finger this is a thimble that you use to, to push the the, uh, th of the needle through. This thimble is a little bit different than some thimbles. It, it's a quilting thimble. It's got a ridge around it so that the, uh, the needle will stick and won't slip off your finger. Um, I bet that needle, if you didn't have that thimble, your finger would get yeah, sore, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would. Very sore. But uh, it, it really... Um, it saves your finger a lot, yes. And this this thing you're working on, is this a table? No, this is what we call, this is a kind of a, a modern quilting frame. They would put the quilt on a frame. Um, this, is a, this is kind of a small one. Most quilting frames would be like about six foot long in the older old, olden days, and they were made out of wood. Uh, and you want this as, the, the quilt as tight as you can get it because that way you can make your stitches even uh, when, when you put it on there. And the, the smaller the stitches, the the better the quilt looks and nicer you look. So, so um, you can touch both the top and the bottom of the quilt at the same time? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's kind of fun, but it's very, very, very time consuming. I'm, I prefer the long arm quilting myself. <laughs> <laughs> How long would it take to do a whole blanket? Depending on your pattern, I would say 75 to 100 hours, depending on your uh, your. That would be like two to three weeks of school, wouldn't it? Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah, it would take a long time to hand quilt. That's why people went to the, the long arm quilting, the electric way. That would make a, if somebody made a quilt blanket for you, that'd make it a really special gift, Oh, it? absolutely. Well, it's, it, and it's special even with the long arm, but it's even more uh, because, you know, your grandmothers and your great-grandmothers, that's the way they did it. They did it by hand. Well, thank you for sharing right. that with us. Thank you. I have some friends here that are going to teach us about yarn and thread and how we make that stuff. Um, I don't even know where it comes from. Where do we get that from? So, um, we have a sheep and we use these to take the wool off and then we, from that wool we have to um, wash it and then we decard it, which is taking the wool after it's been washed it and we put it on these needle-like and um, it um, kind of takes out the, I just have kind of ugliness and it, um, it gives it softer and it takes out the greenness. It kind of straightens it out, doesn't it? So that's hair from a, from a sheep. Yeah. Huh. And then what do you do with it next? So once it is done that, we, um, we put it to wool out like this. That is soft. We attach it to this. The end of the um, thing that's on the bottom, and start spinning. And can you show me how that works? Mm -hmm. So you take the, the loose roll. And then you can close it around the what you have, the yarn that you have so far, and then you start spinning to the right. And you kind of just stretch it out, and you have to hold it with your fingers until it kind of holds on, um, takes grasp of it and then you kind of you kind of pull slightly and it's pinching with your right hand to get it so the longer you pinch the tighter it will become as a um, yarn so the, the, um, the more time that you have your finger pinching the tighter it will be and while you're holding that that's making that string go round and round isn't it yes okay so then it goes in through here. Yep, and then there's the hooks, which kind of filters it from here into there. And then once you finish, like 
if full barber, you can put it in your um, spot and your fill up all these barbers, and then you can do something called flying. So it takes two or three or more um, bob bobbins with the yarn of it, and you attach them, and it comes to like a almost a braid, but not a braid, just a black braid. Okay. All that from the hair on a sheep, huh? Yep. That's amazing. This is some sheep's wool. We have two sheep and, and we shoe them each spring. Uh, they stay inside pretty much so they don't get terribly dirty, but they have a feel to them. That's lanolin. Oh, it's, it's kind of oily feeling almost or sticky. It is. Yeah. And I, I try to keep them where they don't get too hot because then it gets not very easy to work with. It's hard to pull apart that flannel in some time. So I usually wash it. Can't you just give the sheep a bath? <laughs> that would be the way to do it. <laughs> but uh, this is what it looks like then after it's been washed. Okay, pause. So this and this are from the same sheep? Yes, yes. That, that was a dirty sheep. <laughs> and this is really pretty clean. Some. Some of them, if it's a muddy spring or something, they, they do get worse than this. But, okay. Uh, so, so then what do you do with that? I will uh, card it. That's kind of like we were talking about just a minute ago. Uh-huh. Yes. You? The same thing, only I, we just do the same. He's doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, okay. And then this one. Now your wheel is bigger than his wheel was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason for that? Well, just um, what you like to use. Okay. This one is is a, a newer wheel. I I like to use some of the antique ones. That's that kind of makes you feel like you're going back in time. So that's kind of fun. But uh, this one travels a lot in the car and gets banged around, and so it's replaceable. <laughs> And you can see I'm not talking more than I'm saying. <laughs> so you, you talk about winding the bobbin. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to wind that all the way full of string? Well, if I spin it and twist it, and uh, it would take probably a couple hours if I if I had plain nice wool that didn't have a lot of dirt in it or anything, uh -huh. something like that. Okay. And. Talk to people on the phone or, or do other things, but uh, it's a it's a pretty easy. So once you once you get a whole thing full of string, then then what do you do with that? I I have a few bobbins, four or five of these this part, and so when it comes when it gets full, I take this out and put up one that is empty, okay. so I can spin several times. I kind of like to wash the wool and then card the wool and then spin it, and then I have enough to maybe make something out of. Uh, if I just do one or two at a time, then I forget what I, what place it came from, so I try to make it one uh, easier. And if somebody just wanted to sell the wool string, can you do that too? Okay. Yeah. So it's a long way from a sheep to get ready to knit something with it, isn't it? Yes, it is. It takes a lot of work. And I'm not a very good knitter, so <laughs> I have friends, though. <laughs> I have friends that, that do quite a bit of knitting for me. Well, thank you for showing us this. You are welcome. So I'm, I'm looking at these different colors that you've, you've spun. Do you have a yellow sheep and a red sheep and a blue sheep? Sure. <laughs> do you? Well, I, I've never seen a blue sheep. <laughs> well, we don't have many either. <laughs> we don't have very many. But uh, it's uh, all started out to be white, and uh, most of them have tags on them. I like to go through in the, oh, this one is milkweed. You know, the things that the fluffy stuff comes out of. The stems, before all that matures, is really juicy and it's it's got that milky stuff and and it makes a very strong dye you can just use this over and over and over this green um, red 
is, I think it's cochineal or something. Some, I think bugs. The cochineal bugs, yeah. Where you, they're just little bitty bugs that live on cactus in the uh, more arid parts of our country. And it makes a really very uh, secure color. It, it doesn't bleed, it bleed out. But then we get into, you know, like goldenrod and milkweed and uh, this one's probably milkweed. <laughs> so, you just so a lot of these are from plants. Mm -hmm. So you take the wool that was white mm -hmm. and you take the plant. Do you have to, how, how do you get the plant color into the wool? I uh, generally just go out and cut it off with scissors and then I have a, a kettle that's uh, I just use for the dyeing. So you and, uh, cook it into almost like soup, mm -hmm. and then you put this in it. You strain the uh, the pieces of uh, like if it's milkweed, and I've cut it in little pieces. I want to strain that out, so I just have the liquid. Okay. And then I put some alum is a good uh, thing to make the color stay. If you don't put some kind of um, mixture with that, it'll it'll wash out. So I, I use um, mordant, it's a mordant, like I said, and then it stays really, it stays really pretty permanent. So this is almost like when I, when I was a kid, I used to go outside and play, and maybe some of you guys do this, you grass stain your knees. It's almost like that, isn't it? It is. You're, you're it staining is, the thread. It is, and it's, it's hard to get out. It's, <laughs> so. well, that's what my mom always said, <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.